Hey everybody, this is Mike Wilmot with Microsoft. We're going to talk today about the SQL Server 2008 Resource Governor. Just a few slides to look at the Resource Governor. What you've got in SQL Server 2005 is a single resource pool, uh, database engine uh, workloads that aren't differentiated. So you can see here all the workloads run in a single space. And there's a best effort resource sharing in terms of memory, CPU, and threading. In S SQL Server 2008, you have the concept of, of resource governor groups and resource governor pools. The groups represent uh, queries that, that you can run on your server, and the pools typically represent pieces of the hardware that you can abstract out. A visual of this, as you can see down here, that you've got two resource pools. You've got three queries, G1, G2, and G3, that are running in the context of SQL Server. G1 and G2, because they're less important loads, are, are be being run in P1, which is resource pool 1. You have a min and max CPU for that. You have a G3 at a medium priority being run wholeheartedly in resource pool 2. So now you can see that in SQL Server 2008, you've got these different workloads. So you've got the backup task, the admin task, the OLAP activity, and these executive reports and ad, ad hoc uh, queries that are being run in their separate workload spaces. And then again, all these resources are being assigned to those different workloads as it makes sense. So you can see that things like memory, CPU, grant timeout, max requests are all part of the, the things that you can govern. Um, you, can, you can differentiate in these workloads by things like app, app name and login. So if you have a specific login that you want to assign to a specific um, resource pool, you can do that with SQL Server um, with the classification function. And again, you can also do things like resource monitoring with uh, Windows resource monitoring to, to look at how, how are those pools behaving. And we'll look at that in a second. So this is just a visual of that in terms of you can have different tasks that are running in different workloads. And those workloads are assigned to different pools. And you can see here that the backup task is running on a, on a specific 10% to 20% memory, so it's fairly low priority, and max CPU 20%. This is nice for things like backup tasks or reporting tasks. You can s do things like stop runaway queries. So that's, that's just a quick overview of the resource governor, and now what I want to do is, is kind of take a look at the actual resource governor in, in action. If you come into um, the SQL Server Management Studio, you can see that Underneath the management node, you've got things like an ex executive pool, a marketing pool, and a production pool. So this could be three different users, your executive user, a marketing user, and a production user. And within, within the context of each of those pools, of which again represent a piece of the hardware, you've got different groups that represent queries that you're running. So if you come in here, you can look at properties of the executive pool, things like minimum CPU, maximum CPU, minimum memory, and maximum memory percent. And you can look at the group, you can assign different importances to the group, and you can also look at other resources that pertain to those groups. Maximum requests, CPU time, memory grants, grant timeouts. Another nice thing about the resource governance is you can see that in, in SQL Server, um, we've got these the ability to, to add performance counters, and you can see that these under the SQL Server resource pool stats, we've got an executive pool, a marketing pool, and a production pool, which we already defined in the, in the UI in SQL Server here. Those things show up here now in the, in the SQL Server resource pool stats, and you can see that you can watch those, the pool executive, the pool marketing, and the pool production. So I'm gonna clear this thing out real quick. Let's clear this out. This is the reliability and performance monitor and what we're going to do is we're going to look at all those three counters in the context of, of an actual workload. So let's, let's take a workload here, and we're going to run three different users. We'll clear this out. We're going to run the executive user here to start out. So this user, say, is, is going to be given the leeway to run queries as, as he or she wants and have pretty much free reign in the machine. Then, say, at a given point of the day, the marketing user fires up a long-run query, you can see that immediately the resource governor working with the, the, the Windows subsystem is going to be smart enough to allocate um, the, the appropriate amount of memory and resources to these two queries to make sure that they're load balanced. And then if you start a third user here, what you're going to see 
is that from, from about 50-50 sharing, you're gonna see about a third for each of those queries. And if you unwind this, you're gonna see the exact same thing. When you stop the production user, you'll see the, the queries take about 50% each. And when you stop the marketing user, then you eventually you're gonna see that, that, the, that the entire system is gonna be giving the executive user the full use of the system. So hopefully that shows how to use the resource governor, what it's all about, some basic principles of it, and ultimately it's about saving money and, and having to buy less hardware and also being smarter about how you run and operate your systems. Talk to you soon. Thanks.